I made this procedurally generated space resource management game, Starship Sprout, with Pygame in three months. For those of you who don't know, Pygame is not actually a game engine. It's a collection of libraries for the programming language Python. While it does allow you to build games like Starship Sprout, it comes with some difficulties. So if you're considering building a game with Pygame, here's five things you should know. Number one, there is no graphical user interface. If you're experienced with Python, this one is pretty obvious. No GUI means designing levels and positioning on-screen elements is a pain in the ass, requiring you to use exact coordinates. However, Pygame does lend itself to procedural generation, like I used in Starship Sprout, which means no level design is necessary. But if you did want to, then you're going to need to use a tool like Tiled and learn how tile maps work. Which, as I discovered when trying to add a ship interior, ain't too easy. Number two, 3D isn't possible. Fortunately, for a game like Starship Sprout, 3D graphics aren't necessary. But if you're looking to make a 3D game, Pygame isn't your best option. Now, I am lying a bit. 3D is possible if you use another library like Panda 3D, but it's not native to Pygame and you're limited with graphical capabilities. An alternative, however, is ray casting, which is essentially using 2D sprites in a 3D space. Think classic Doom. Number three, you should keep your game as modular as possible. This means breaking every scene and mechanic down into individual functions. Doing so means it's easier to create and manage a game state manager, as well as debugging and keeping on top of your code. Number four, don't use the default Python IDE. While it's great for small projects, if your game requires multiple scripts, then it can become pretty unwieldy. You're better off using a third party IDE like PyCharm or VS Studio. That way you get GitHub integration and a better overview of what you're doing. Number five, don't use subprocesses. While it might seem convenient to call different scripts with a subprocess, it's going to slow your game down and create unnecessary load times. If you're taking a modular approach, you can just call each scene or mechanic as a function from different scripts. Then you'll see almost no load times. So there you have it. There is five things to consider when using Pygame as your game development engine. If you want to see the kind of games that Pygame can create, go ahead and check out Starship Sprout on itch.io. It's currently free and there is some DLC on the way. So it's a great time to get involved. Otherwise, if you'd like to learn more about game development and keep up to date with our future projects, go ahead and join our Discord server. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.